So I'm sure you've all heard how in a few years, extinct animals are coming back to life, which is just saying that out loud makes me question what the hell is happening. So the bioscience company Colossal are actively working on bringing back woolly mammoths, Tasmanian tigers, and dodos, and they're predicting that woolly mammoths will be back in the world by 2027, which is nuts. Like the fact that it's happening this soon, seeing extinct animals always seemed like a far off dream, but they're really confident that it's about to go down. And I'm really conflicted on this because there's so many good things that could come out of the extinction, but also a lot of horrible things. So I kind of want to break down the pros and cons of de-extinction, if we should bring back these animals, and why we shouldn't, and some of the consequences that could follow suit. So to briefly explain how this works, we're not bringing just a full-on woolly mammoth back into the world. We're pretty much taking an Asian elephant, which has like 99.6% the same DNA as a woolly mammoth, comparing that to a woolly mammoth genome and editing the genes of that Asian elephant so that you pretty much have a hairy, fat elephant that can survive the cold and it functions the same ecological role as a woolly mammoth but we're not exactly bringing back the same thing if that makes sense so the first thing i hear people talking about especially when i post stuff about de-extinction on tiktok everyone's commenting like we have six movies explaining why this is a terrible idea and in a lot of ways this isn't like jurassic park but it could be if we aren't careful. So we're not bringing back dinosaurs. We're not bringing back just any extinct animal we want. We can only bring back animals whose DNA we have intact and a good amount of it because we need to sequence their entire genome in order to do stuff like this. And I'll get into it later how important having a lot of material is. But we're not just gonna go out and bring back like a Tyrannosaurus. We're bringing back animals that have gone extinct from our own hand. They would still be alive if humans hadn't killed them off. That's how it is for the mammoth, the thylacine, and the dodo. So we're really kind of righting our wrongs by bringing these animals back. And let's just get right into the pros. How is de-extinction a good idea? And the first big benefit, first off, this would be like the greatest scientific achievement since landing on the moon. I mean, bringing back an animal that's been dead for hundreds, if not thousands of years is insane. Like it's really is science fiction, but made reality. And it would truly be in textbooks for thousands of years to come. The date we bring back a woolly mammoth would always be in there. It would be just an incredible step for humanity. And it's also something, a lot of humans' inventions, like AI, we are actively designing AI to be smarter and smarter and all these chatbots and stuff. And it's on, it's getting kind of terrifying, if I'm gonna be honest. They're getting a little more self-aware than I'd like, and we're getting closer to Skynet by the day. And we're really doing it for no reason but to just say, hey, we can. Which is literally like Jurassic Park. Like, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Whereas bringing back extinct animals, if we wanted to just mess around with genetics and animals, you could just make a real life Bigfoot. But no, we're actively bringing back animals that we have screwed over in an attempt to kind of right some wrongs that our ancestors have done. And a huge pro for bringing back these extinct animals is the massive benefit that their native ecosystems would get. Thylacines or Tasmanian tigers used to be all over the mainland and Tasmania, really serving the function of like a wolf, like that large predator. But after we came in, hunted them and their prey and brought in dingoes, dingoes are really just dogs, like feral dogs. They didn't evolve in Australia. We brought them in thousands of years ago and they've taken over the place of Tasmanian tigers. And I'm kind of thankful that they did because if we just wiped out all the Tasmanian tigers, the entire Australian ecosystem would be just screwed over. There'd be no large predator. The prey would be going out of control. So by replacing things like foxes and feral cats, which are killing so many of the native mammals, by bringing back Australia's true top predator, it would really kind of bring some balance to the ecosystem if we remove those other animals. And this is the same case with the other extinct animals. By bringing back woolly mammoths, you kind of hear this argument like, oh, by stepping on the ground, 
they'll move the snow, which will freeze the ground more and help the permafrost and help sequester CO2. And they'll knock over trees, which will make room for grassland and oh, the climate change is fixed. But to me, that sounds like just kind of a justification for bringing Woolly Mammoths back because you could accomplish this by, I don't know, like a solar powered bulldozer versus bringing back Woolly Mammoths. But either way, bringing Woolly Mammoths back to the Arctic, it would really help that ecosystem because it's designed for being patted down by large herbivores. And, and the same thing goes for the American grasslands. Like the more bison we introduce to the Great Plains, the healthier that ecosystem's gonna be because it evolved alongside these large herbivores. Another pro for bringing back these extinct animals is take something like the dodo. They're from the island of Mauritius. And how many of you have visited the island of Mauritius? Chances are not a lot. But if we bring back dodos, that island's economy is going insane. It's gonna be like the number one tourist destination on earth, especially with uh, all the crazy birding people out there. Oh my God, they'll be in droves to see a dodo in the wild. And just the economy of that place would go crazy. They'd have so much funding for really protecting that ecosystem. And it would just be a massive hub for ecotourism. Places like Costa Rica, they get so much money from tourism just to go look at the animals. And that money incentivizes the people of that country to protect the animals so they get more money. And that money directly goes into preserving habitat and creating more. So ecotourism brought on by these extinct animals to wherever they're brought would really just help those environments. And the last real pro I can think of is that by finalizing this technology to bring back extinct animals, it doesn't just help extinct animals, but take something like the black-footed ferret. The entire population of them on Earth was bred from only seven individuals. So that species is like super inbred and their genetic diversity is screwed. But we've actually brought back a dead 30 year old ferret. We cloned it, introduced it back into the environment and that new genetic juice has really just invigorated the population. And the more we can do that will really help these populations of animals that are really like inbred, like things like cheetahs, their population has such low genetic diversity, Amur leopards, animals like this that we can introduce the DNA of dead ones to really invigorate the population. The more of that we get, that we could really help some environments and some endangered animals. But then that kind of brings me to some of the issues I have with de-extinction. Say you have a dodo, we have a mummified dodo foot that we're getting all our DNA from and we bring back a dodo using that DNA template. But now what? Are you just gonna keep breeding that same clone of a dodo until you have a population of 20 just identical dodos? The, the genetic diversity is gonna be screwed. They're gonna be so inbred. So if we bring back an extinct animal, we either have to find a way to slightly tweak their DNA without ruining their genetic makeup, but enough to where they're diverse enough to breed with the others, or we just need a lot of different DNA samples from different individuals. So it's just something we really need to keep in mind because we don't just want a bunch of inbred mammoths roaming the Arctic. And another kind of gripe I have is that this company is getting so much money and funding. I think they even got funding from the CIA to bring back these extinct animals and work on this genetic research. And say, say for a moment, instead of bringing back extinct animals, if you allocated that same amount of money to preserving the animals we already have and stop our endangered animals from going extinct, we could make so much progress. But by instead bringing back animals that are already extinct, I'm worried that we'll care less about endangered animals. So, so say if like polar bears go extinct, we could just be like, oh, we've so many dead polar bears, we could just clone back, you know, any we would need. So we don't really need to bring them back yet. Let's just bring back more really extinct animals, then we can come back to the polar bear. But we should really focus, instead of this kind of science project, really focusing on conservation and stopping global warming and reducing invasive species. Just do things that would really kind of fix the problems with our current species. And another thing to keep in mind, it's not like we're just gonna, you know, one day not have any mammoths and then the next day, oh, a perfect mammoth. We're gonna go through a lot of dead baby elephants. Like we have tried to bring back the Pyrenean Ibex with pretty much the same technology 
And we were successful for like two minutes before that little Pyrenean Ibex we brought back had like a lung issue, just a defect genetically and it died. And the same thing with the gastric brooding frog. We tried to bring back this frog and they wouldn't get past a certain stage of the embryo. So before we can perfect this, we're gonna go through a lot of dead kind of gross half developed creatures, which is gonna be pretty, pretty sad and pretty messed up. And when you do end up with that final product, you have to consider its behavior. How much of a Tasmanian tiger's behavior is instinctual and genetic and how much does it have to learn from its parents? Like when we started bringing California condors back, like really kind of raising them and trying to help that endangered species, when we just raised them like a human, they didn't know what to do in the wild. They were just following people around. So we had to make like a sock puppet condor to like teach that condor how to be a condor and how to like imprint correctly. So, and we don't know how the hell a dodo is supposed to work in the environment. So we really just kind of have to be aware of these things. And again, I'm not an expert. I'm sure there's biologists there working like, okay, how can we make sure these dodos don't just eat rocks like we really need to focus on it once we bring back these animals make sure they're prepared for surviving in their new habitat and my final con for bringing back extinct animals is back to the jurassic park thing like once you do this you cannot go back it's like when we made the nuclear bomb there was a threshold where if we cross it with nuclear energy and power we can never go back and once we made that first atomic bomb you can't go back there's a ton of nukes out there and we can never take that away so if you cross this bridge with genetic tampering on this level you cannot go back the future is forever changed and that's that's kind of scary especially with say designer babies you know if people if we get really good at editing genetics you can just be like oh i, I kind of want my baby to be like super jacked and like you know have all these features you could like customize your own baby with genetic technology or other things we could make just oh you want to see a white platypus here now it's albino so it, it it leads to a lot of kind of ethically weird stuff if we really get good at this genetic tampering. And again, if we bring back these animals, they need to be, the focus needs to be releasing them back into the environment. They can't just be little sideshow things like, oh, our zoo has a dodo, so come visit, or making like a literal Jurassic Park of just captive extinct animals. That that would be bad. We're just, that would be just doing this for profit rather than really doing it to benefit the earth. So if we do this, we really need to be careful to make sure it's for the good of our planet and not just for some rich people to make some money. Now for my final verdict on if we should bring back extinct animals, and I've been, I, I go back and forth on this so many times because we could really screw it up, but it could be so good. And honestly, I think we should. I think we should bring them back. And I could be totally wrong on this. I, we could just destroy our world with genetic tampering and just bring our species into an apocalypse. But I don't know. I really wanna hear from your guys, your thoughts, any ethical concerns that I didn't think about. But to me, I really think we did kind of do a disservice to the planet in getting rid of these extinct species. I mean, just with how many invasive species we've introduced, we have changed the world on a level we can't take back. And to kind of give back to the world, fix some of this garbage we've introduced to it, I think that would be a really good productive move for our species. For once, we aren't doing something just for the sake of progress. We're doing something, a massive scientific achievement to fix something we've done in the past. And that would set a really good precedent. But my biggest point is that we have to do it right. We have to have laws in place. We have to have real people thinking about these issues because if we do this wrong, we could we could do it very wrong and we can't come back from that. And the money we're getting for the funding of these extinct animals, let's use that to promote how important it is to keep our current animals alive. Let's keep our extant animals still here because we can't use de-extinction to solve all of our issues. We can't have all these animals going extinct and us using de-extinction as a crutch to be like, oh, well, we can just bring it back later. So we really need to do this right. And I wanna end 
on this book I have right here. This book showcases all of the major animals that we directly have made extinct. It's a gap in nature illustrated by Peter Shonen. And the art in this book is just fantastic. And it really shows what life could be if we brought these extinct animals back. And for the longest time, I thought this picture was the closest I would ever get to seeing a Tasmanian tiger. And the fact that we're on the precipice of really bringing them back, that's a beautiful thing. But again, I'm just a person, I'm not an expert. So if you guys have opinions on this and you guys have moral concerns, I wanna hear them, I wanna know what the population thinks and if de-extinction is a good idea. So thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you all so much for watching.